This month, for Filipino American History Month, we take a look at the life of philanthropist and community activist Mrs. Lloyda Lewis. She used to run a multi-billion dollar company and was one of a handful of Asian women to run a Fortune 500. And while she may be retired from the day-to-day -day business of running a major company, we found she's keeping very busy. Many may not know that Mrs. Lloyda Nicholas Lewis is quite an accomplished pianist, but these days she doesn't have much time to sit down and play. She is busier than ever. With the 25th anniversary of her husband's death approaching, she's working on a documentary about his legacy. Reginald Lewis was the first African American to lead a billion dollar Fortune 500 company. 25 years after his death, he is known by those who were teenagers or who were in college at that time. But for the young people, the millennials, they, they really don't know him. Many may also not know his widow, Mrs. Lloyda Lewis, took over the company after her husband's death. I met with Mrs. Lewis recently in her home, where she spoke candidly about her life, a life marked with grief and later success and joy. She and Mr. Lewis made a striking couple in the 60s, and they stood out. She was a Filipina married to a black man. Just two years after the Supreme Court ruled that laws prohibiting interracial marriages were unconstitutional. So in 1969, what was it like to be um, an Asian woman married to a black man in the United States? We were not raised to be identifying people according to color of skin. So they're black, white, what was that? You know, I'm married to him. So I never felt discriminated against, either in the black community or in the white community. How about in the Asian community? Asian community, yes. I know Filipinos are racist, so I, I very seldom attended a Filipino affair with him because I know that you know, I don't want him to be disrespected. Mrs. Lewis is not known for mincing words. She speaks what's on her mind, and it's probably one reason she was able to lead her husband's company. It's very daunting. I've never run a business before, but my parents are entrepreneurs. From the time I was growing up, I hear my father dealing with, how much is the shrimp? Oh, that's too much. You know, he was making deals. It was nothing to me negotiating or, um, and as I, I, you know, I treat people the same, whether they are my managers or where they are the floor leader in the factory, I treat them all the same. Mrs. Lewis was born in Sarsagon, a small town in the Philippines. She says her father always saw a leader in his young daughter. He was so sure that I would be something. So when I was nine years old, we had a movie house in Sarsagon and he named it after me, Lloyda Theater so that when I run for public office, I already have name recognition. That was the plan. After law school, Lewis was supposed to return to her hometown and maybe run for public office. But there was a detour to the United States that changed her life forever. She met Reginald Lewis, then a hardworking attorney on a blind double date. We talked nonstop. Anything I say, he had something to say. And anything he said, I had something to add. Six months later, they were married. When you told your parents who you were going to marry, what was their reaction? They just saw that their older daughter was in love. And so my father gave me a wonderful wedding. Their story almost sounds like a fairy tale. Boy marries girl, moves to New York, raises two girls, and then makes billions, literally. The ambitious and driven Harvard Law School graduate who was raised by a single mom bought Beatrice, a food company, in a leveraged buyout in 1987 for $1 billion. The company became the largest owned by an African American. Mr. Lewis soon moved the family to Paris where the company had offices. I always tell that was living the life of the rich and famous. He had his own plane. He had limousines. We had 25-room apartment in Paris. He had 4,500 employees. It was originally 64 companies in 31 countries. In his mind, you buy a company, leverage buyout, meaning you borrow all the money, make it profitable, reduce the debt, and then sell. But five years later, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. And 
six weeks later, he died. So that was totally, totally the toughest, the darkest, darkest night of my soul. Mrs. Lewis mourned for one year. Then despite pushback from some of the investors, she took over as CEO of Beatrice. Her first task was to cut costs. She's credited for helping to navigate the company after her husband's death before selling it off in 1999. After stepping down as chairwoman and CEO, she continued to run the Reginald F. Lewis Foundation. She is also a co-founder of the civil rights organization, the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. And she is a big campaign contributor to minorities and women in public office, including New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. We are the captain of our destiny. So as much as we can, let's do what we can do to right a wrong and she's a proud mother and grandmother. They're my pride and joy because they have been able to uh, graduate cum laude from Harvard. With the 25th anniversary of her husband's death coming up, she wants to ensure his accomplishments are not forgotten. How do you want the world to remember Mr. Lewis? Ah, Reginald Lewis. He was young, gifted, and black, and ambitious and tenacious in what he wanted to do. And so he reached his dream. For Asian American Life, I'm Ernabel DeMillo.